Hello again everyone, and welcome back to Linode. In today's video, what we're going to do is take a look at setting up Plex. Plex is a very popular application, and for good reason. It's a really awesome way to organize your movies, your TV shows, even your music, so it's a really powerful application to have at your disposal. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like to set up Plex on Linode. All right, so let's get started. Now I have a number of Linode instances right here that I'm using for other videos and tutorials that I'm doing, but I'm going to create a fresh instance for Plex. So what I'll do is click right here where it says create Linode. And for the distribution, what I'm going to do is choose Ubuntu 2004. That's a good choice for a project such as this. And other distributions are supported as well, but Ubuntu works very well for this use case. So that's what I'm going with. Now here we're going to select a region, and as always you just choose whatever region works better for you. What I like to do is just choose one that's at least relatively close to me, so I'll choose this one right here for Toronto. And now we get down here to the Linode plan. Now since we're creating a Plex server, we probably don't want to create a Nanode instance because we would only have 1 gig of RAM, only 25 gigs of storage, it's a decent instance, but Plex is a little bit heavier. So what I recommend is going with something that has either two gigabytes or more. And specifically, I'm going to go with this one right here, the four gigabyte instance. Now you could probably get away with the two gigabyte Linode instance. Two gigs of RAM is the recommended minimum from Plex themselves. And you might even be able to get Plex to run on less than that. But what I'm going to do is choose the four gigabyte version because I think that's going to be a happy medium. And we get the pricing information right here. We can see how much RAM we have. And we have two CPUs and 80 gigabytes of storage as well. So this instance should work just fine for what we are trying to accomplish today. And for the label, I'm going to call it Plex Server. Fair enough. And then I'll type in my super secret password. And this will be the root user that we'll use to log in here very shortly. And we'll scroll down. Backups are something that you could consider if you'd like to, completely optional. It does make the cost go up a little bit, but backups are good. That might be something that you might want to consider. Anyway, on my end, I'll leave that unchecked for now. This is just a sample instance anyway. I'll go ahead and create the instance. I'll click on the Lish console right here, so that way we can see the process and know exactly when it's ready to go. When it starts booting up, We'll see all kinds of text fly by on the screen right here. So I'll just wait for this to boot up and then I'll be right back. All right, we should be good to go. So what I'm gonna do is just close this right here and I will use SSH to connect to our instance. That's my preferred way to do it. So what I'll do is go down here to my terminal. There's the IP address. Let's go ahead and get connected. So at this point, we have a fresh Linode instance and it's ready to go. We can get started and set up Plex. But before we do that, I do recommend that you check out the getting started guide on Linode's documentation pages. And the reason for that is there's a few things that you really should do before you actually start building a production server. Things like installing updates and also setting the host name. There's a few things that you should probably take into consideration. Now this is all covered in a previous video, so what I'm going to do really quickly is create a username for myself. I'm going to install the updates for this server and change the host name as well. These are the minimum things. I'm going to go through this very quickly because again, we already have videos on that topic, but it is important, so I'm going to take care of it. First of all, what I'm going to do is edit the Etsy hostname file. And I change the host name to Plex server because, well, that's what it is. Then I'll save the file. That's control O if you didn't already know. Enter and then control X to exit out. Second, I'm going to edit the Etsy host file. And I'm going to create a new line right here. And this will make sure that the host name is actually resolved to the loopback adapter. But all of this information is in the getting started guide if you need more information on what exactly I'm doing. 
So I just added the host name here as well. And of course, if you have a domain, which is a really good idea, then you could actually make the host name the same as your domain name. But I'm going to go ahead and save this file for now and exit out. Next, what I'm going to do is add a user for myself. So that's just add user and then the username that you want to create. And I'm just going to go through this really quickly. And now I have a user for myself. I'm going to add my user to the sudo group so that way my user is able to run administrative commands. I will do that with user mod dash lowercase a uppercase g. I want to be added to the sudo group and the user that I want added to that group is the one that I just created. And that's done. Next what I'm going to do is install all of the updates. And to do that, I will run apt update. Then I'll chain that into apt dist upgrade with two ampersands like you see here. And what that should do is update the repository index. And then right after that, it should start installing the security patches that might be available for this installation. Let's go ahead and do it. So there's quite a few packages to update, so I'm going to press enter. And I'll let these install, and I'll be right back as soon as it's done. And for this right here, I'll just go ahead and accept the defaults. So I'll press enter, enter again. And now the remaining updates are still installing. Should be done fairly shortly. All right, so the server is completely up to date now. So what I'm going to do is reboot the server. So I'm going to go ahead and let that reboot in the background. And for now, what I need to do is find the download for Plex. I want to have that ready because that's the next step. So what I'm going to do right now is switch over to a web browser. And I'll open up a new tab. And what I'm going to do is go to Plex.tv. And then we'll click on the download button. And what we want to do is download the Plex media server. Under Platform, we're going to choose Linux, and then here we'll choose our distribution. And as you can see, we have Fedora and Ubuntu supported here. So what I'm actually going to do is download this version. It's for Ubuntu 16.04 and above, as well as Debian 8 and above. So this should be the one that we want. But what I'm not going to do is click on this and download it, at least not yet. What I'm going to do instead is right click on it, and I'll click right here to copy the link. So back here in the terminal, what I'm going to do is connect back to the server. Maybe enough time has passed for it to be done booting up. Let's see. I'll just take off root and put in my name since I did create a user for myself. And now we're logged in. At this point, we have a fully updated Linode instance. I've created a user for myself. I'm logged in. So now it's time to get started and actually get Plex installed. First, what we need to do is find out if we have wgit installed on our server. We probably do, but let's make sure. You can type which and then wgit. And if you see output, that means it is installed. And if you don't have it for some reason, you could use your distributions package manager to get the wgit package installed. But specifically, what I'm going to use wgit for is for downloading the package for Plex, which we'll be needing. So I'll just paste in the URL right here. Again, I just grabbed that from the official site. So I'm going to press enter and it's downloading. As you can see, I have the package right here in my home directory, so it's ready to be installed. So what I'm going to do is type sudo dpkg and then dash i, and then I'll start typing the name of the package and I will tab complete the name because I don't want to type all of that. So it auto completed and now this command right here will actually get this installed, so I'll press enter. And according to this, it looks like the installation is actually successful. Next, what we're going to do is check the Plex Media Server service and see whether or not it's running. And to do that, we'll type systemctl status. And then what we want to check the status of is Plex Media Server dot service. Let's see if it's running. And it is. Now notice right here that the status is active and running. 
And the text is quite large here, but if I scroll over to the right, we can also see that the Plex Media Server service is enabled as well, which means when I reboot the Linode instance, it's going to automatically start Plex, which is exactly what we'd like. We can press Q to break out of here. And if for some reason your Plex Media Server service is not running, what you could do is run sudo systemctl and then start. And I'm not going to do this because, well, it's already running. I don't need to start it again. And another thing that you might want to consider is enabling the service if it wasn't already enabled, which again will make sure that it starts up along with your Linode. So at this point, what we're going to do is actually disconnect from the Linode instance. And now I'm here on my local command prompt. And the reason why I disconnected is because the next step involves creating an SSH tunnel. Don't worry, I'll show you how to do it. And this SSH tunnel will be used to facilitate the first time setup of Plex. So just go ahead and follow along with me and it should be pretty straightforward. So what I'm going to do is recall the SSH command and here it is. And at the end of it, I'm going to type hyphen capital L and then 8888 colon localhost colon 32400, just like that. I'll press enter and then I'll enter in the password for the Linode instance, the one that we're configuring. And that's all there is to it. Now what we're going to do is go back to a web browser. And here we have the page where I downloaded it. What I'm going to do instead is enter in a special URL. We're going to navigate to localhost, colon, 8888, and then slash web, just like that. Let's see what happens. So for this right here, what you would want to do is sign in with your Plex account. So I'll leave that up to you. But I don't actually have a Plex account to use with this particular example. So what I'm going to do instead is click continue with email. And then actually what I need to do is click right here where it shows sign up with email. So I'll create the username. I'll just type in an email address. And then a password. And that should be good. So I'm going to click got it right here and I'll skip this for now. A Plex Pass might be useful if you really want to dive into this platform. But right now it's asking us to set a name which is already pre-populated here with the host name. So that's okay. And by default, it's allowing access from outside my home for the media. I'm going to leave that checked as well. And right here, it's actually asking me which folder I would like to use for the content that I would like to watch via Plex, but I haven't actually created a directory for that just yet. So what I'm going to do is switch back over here to my terminal. I'm going to leave this page open while I do this. And here I have the terminal. So what I want to do, like I mentioned, is create a location or a directory that's going to hold my media. So what I'll do is just go to the root of the file system. And now that I'm here in the root of the file system, what I'm going to do is make a few directories. So what I'll do is type sudo mkdir-p, and that's because I'd like the parent directory to be created as well. I don't want to run multiple commands to create directories if I don't have to. I'm going to call the parent directory Plex Media, and inside there I'll create a movie subdirectory. And what I'll also do is create another directory, this time for television shows. So again, sudo mkdir, Plex hyphen media, and then television. I think that's pretty good for starting out. So I'll press enter. And as you can see, we have the directory right here that we're going to use for media for Plex. So let's go back to the web browser and add those directories. So I'll click add library. I'm going to create a library for movies. Then under add folders, I'll click right here. We'll click on the root of the file system. We'll scroll down, click Plex Media, and Movies. Let's go ahead and add it. Add library. So we have the movies library added. I'm going to add the other one right now. This time for TV shows. Basically the same process again. Let's
Let's add that one and add the library. So now we've added both libraries, so I can simply click Next, and then Done, and our server should be ready to go. Now here it's asking us to check the things that we want to be shown in the web console. I'm going to leave that all enabled, but if there's anything here that you really don't think you'll ever need, you could go ahead and uncheck it. Like for example, if you don't subscribe to a live TV service, then what's the point of having a live TV option? You could uncheck that. But again, I'll just leave everything turned on and finish the setup. Now, as you can see, we have a bunch of movies here, but these aren't my movies. These are just movies that are here on the interface of Plex itself. If I click on movies, well, there's nothing there. Why is there nothing there? Well, because we haven't added anything yet. And basically, all you should need to do is add media to the folders that we've created during the installation process, the library folders. And as soon as you do that, then the content should show up here in the library. So there you go. Now you have your very own Plex server on Linode, and that's great because Plex is awesome. It even gets a lot of use in my household as well, and I think you're going to love it. Let us know what you thought of this video in the comments down below, and definitely subscribe if you haven't already done so, because we have some awesome content coming very soon. Thanks for watching.